Hello everybody, this is Tony, and I do stuff. Today I'm going to be tackling this closet over my garage. It's a catch-all for just junk. Yeah, there are no shelves in here. Stuff is everywhere. I mean, I don't even know what's in there, and if there was something back there, I couldn't get to it. So that's the subject of today's video. Back at one of my favorite places, Lowe's loves our vets. I love our vets. They give us preferred parking and military discounts. I've put these shelves up before, and I don't ever remember a six foot length of this stuff being $40. Home Depot had the shelving for about the same price, but they also had this melamine coated particle board. An eight foot section of this stuff for just a little less than 26 bucks. I'm going to have to fabricate some custom shelf brackets. I have some material at home that I believe will serve the purpose. It's going to be heavy, but hey, more is better. This stuff has been kicking around in my garage for about two years. As they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I have no idea what they originally were, but they're going to be shelf brackets now. The material I'm using is two inches wide and one quarter inch thick. It's aluminum, so I'm going to have to use a MIG gun to weld it. I'm going to keep this simple. Two pieces, one vertical, one horizontal, with a 45 degree angle brace. The bracket will be secured to the wall using two inch lag screws. There's already an existing hole in the top, so I'll be drilling the bottom one. I'll use two smaller screws to secure the shelf in place. I made this cardboard model of the bracket so I could get an idea of its physical size and what I'm going to have to do to build this thing. Looks like it's going to work out. So I'm going to start cutting metal. The vertical brace was 45 degrees as I mentioned before and uh, for that to be 45 degrees and sit where I have it on the model the extreme ends the longest part needed to be 18 and a quarter inches so broke out the sharpie got the little angle finder and marked all my stock Making the 45 degree cuts with the porta band was a challenge. There are stands on the market that make cuts like these uh, simpler with this saw. This makeshift fixture made assembling the individual elements a lot easier and more efficient. Made the brackets come out much more consistently as well. I started to improve the fixturing. I put a stop for this way and a stop for that way so I don't have to keep truing it up 
So the fixturing is getting a little more complex, but I got a lot of these things to go. That's how many I got left, and that's how many I've done. So they're coming out okay. been a long day however got them all done some of the wells look like crap and some of them look really good I only welded the brackets on one side for what they have to support I mean this it's way overbuilt so Fixturing worked out pretty good. Um, you make the first one, make a jig, perfect the jig, rinse and repeat. This material had existing holes. Uh, they're larger than the screws I'm using, so I'm going to have to use washers to put the bolts in. But it also gives me the advantage of being able to move the brackets around to level them when I'm mounting. I'll be drilling the bottom holes very close to the sides of the bolt. Tomorrow, I'm going to be unloading that closet. I mean, you just never realize how much crap you can accumulate over time. I mean, there are things here that we haven't touched in years. This printer, which is downstairs and we use it, why we kept the box? I don't know, because I'm a hoarder and I can't stop. So much for being a pack rat. We have a clean slate to work with here now. We're gonna lay out some lines and we're gonna start putting some brackets in and we're gonna make this place usable. I'm gonna be using a Zircon Stud Sensor Pro. This thing's probably 20 years old. Now, I never rely completely on the stud finder. You know, there's the end of the stud right there. You just put a mark there. And then you keep going until it comes off of the stud. And there's where your stud is. I'll take a tiny drill bit, very tiny, and I'll fish the wall just to make sure there is a stud there because sometimes it picks up on deep insulation and stuff. Now it does have a deep scan mode. If you press this twice, you see these two lights come on that's the deep scan mode it makes it extra sensitive and see how it picked up on the stud way before a little bit before we got there and it comes off 
See, there's where my original mark was without deep scan. So you, you got to watch how you use the thing. After marking all the studs and stretching the tape out, the studs are on 16 inch centers. So uh, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna mark some vertical lines using a level and uh, start figuring out where to, how to space the shelves for all of the tubs and stuff that I have. Yeah, I originally wanted to start the brackets here in the corner. What I found out was, obviously, there is no stud there. The stud is back in there in the corner or this way. At first I tried going at an angle but I just can't get enough can't get enough stud in there so I moved to the next stud so I'm starting with about oh let's see about eight to ten inches here you know off the wall that's not going to be supported by anything so hopefully the the melamine board is tough enough for that Got all the brackets up for the other side. And I laid one shelf on the bottom and I notice that the door bumps into it. So on all of these shelves on this side, I'm gonna have to take off probably about a half inch. All the way to the door stop okay I'll do that three more times to secure the shelves to the brackets I'm gonna use these Tex self drilling screws wood to metal a normal looks like a screw with a drill bit on the end of it you got these little wings on here and then there's regular machine threads well it'll cut through these wings will hog out the wood and then when this contacts metal, it'll drill right on through there, and then it'll cut threads right into the metal. <laughs> Turns out this aluminum was... Uh, a little tougher than I thought. I should have known when I was drilling it earlier. Uh, so what I had to do is I had to pre-drill. Um, I just took a smaller drill bit, just a little bit, a little bit smaller than this, and I pre-drilled each hole, and then it was able to drive in there. 
I think the project turned out pretty good. You be the judge. You know, I'm biased. Um, I got everything up off the floor. Probably going to purge, lose about 50% of the things that I took out of here. You know, I'm a hoarder. Um, some of the wells were good. Some of the wells were not so good. But for what it's got to do, these are good, sturdy shells. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Tony. And I do stuff.